Back in November 2021, my YouTube channel was just an idea in my head. I secretly bought a camera and my boyfriend told me to return it because the ROI wasn't there. But I told him I'm going to do it. You never know. The next day, I wrote my first script about my Spotify internship on Google Slides and spent the evening filming on my iPhone for 30 minutes. Hi everyone, I'm Lillian. It was so weird, but that was the start. Hi everyone, I'm Lillian. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. My first three videos only had 95 views each. I was so embarrassed I didn't tell anyone other than my boyfriend and my parents. I wrote in my journal, this is so difficult, but what if I do something that hasn't been done before? What if I share my career knowledge, but in a fun vlog format? So there it was, my first day in the life as a business analyst video. It went viral two weeks later, and I started getting DMs on Instagram, thousands of comments. My inbox was filled with brand opportunities, so I said yes to every interview, every collab. I would think about the next video idea in my shower, wake up early to film, edit until 2 a.m., all while doing my 9 to 5 job, because I kept telling myself I have to be better. Six months later, I reached my breaking point. I was so exhausted, and I was so burnt out. So I took two months off of YouTube to work on myself. I learned that it's okay to ask for help. So my boyfriend became my manager and also started helping me to film, edit, and basically do anything I asked him to do. I also started to build a small team and it felt good knowing that I didn't have to walk alone anymore. Nine months into my YouTube journey, I reached 100,000 subscribers. That's when it hit me that I'm not just talking to the camera. I'm talking to 100,000 real people like you who may have found something that resonated with you through my videos. That's when I learned to enjoy this YouTube journey. I started to meet fellow creators and my subscribers. It's not about getting a video out. It's about the journey of making a video and sharing my story with you. But most importantly, I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for every single one of you. So thank you. Thank you for being part of my journey in 2022 and thank you for allowing me to be part of yours as well. I can't wait to show you what's to come in 2023 and beyond. We got this. So that was my 2022 wrapped. Since it's now 2023, I thought what better way than to start off the year with a Q&A and answer some of your questions. And hopefully this helps you approach your year as well. Also, we have Bella here, the back, she's napping, so. What's your work plan for 2023? What's your goal for 2023? I actually don't set specific goals for myself because they tend to limit my potential. I instead think about what theme or aspect of my life that I wanna lean more into and kind of everything I do throughout that year will serve towards that. So professionally, I wanna lean more into leadership and ownership. So leadership as in like in my nine to five job, not wait for tasks to be given to me, but instead being able to find opportunities for the team, pursue them, being like the thought leader to guide others on how to do it. And with YouTube, I want to lean more into ownership. But I want to be able to build a team around it and not just like me scrambling like crazy behind every video. Every video is a product and there's so much process that goes behind the scenes from strategizing, negotiating sponsorship, scripting, filming, editing, post-production, and there's also a lot of administrative tasks around it. And I actually have two part-time employees that started already six months ago. Really grateful for them and I can also share in future videos. Personally, I think it would be a lot of like reframing about what success means for me and to enjoy life more. I learned that success isn't just measured by money, fame, prestige, that is. It's also family, friends, love, and joy. So in 2023, I want to enjoy life more and just doing things because it makes me happy, period. And on the topic of goal for 2023, if you're looking to learn something new, like learning a new language, I want to introduce you to italki. Italki is the place where you can learn English with over 7,000 high quality native speaking teachers. You can have one-on-one -on -one customized English language lessons to discuss any topics you need at any time, anywhere. For instance, if you want to improve English skills for a job interview, you can find teachers under the interview category. There's no subscription needed and you pay per lesson. Each lesson starts at only $5. Aside from English, you can also learn more than 150 other languages on italki. So I thought I would show you my lesson with my teacher today, Haley. Hi! Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? I would love to know what your 2023 resolution is for this year. My word for this year is authenticity. Mm -hmm. So I really want to practice being a bit more authentic and consuming content that helps me. Anything, just to feel more confident being myself. I love you. 
I think similar to you in a way, I think 2023 will be a lot of like reframing what success means to me. 2023, I learned it's also joy, love, friendships, relationships, going to allow myself more time to just enjoy things I want to do. I love that. Def redefine your metrics of success. Exactly. Everyone needs to do that. So to start your language learning journey today, you can use my code Lillian2023 to redeem an extra $5 extra credit towards your first lesson. The discounts are only available for the first 50 users and will expire on January 31st. So check them out linked in the description box. Any plans to move to another city? Yes, I definitely see myself spending time in Taiwan. I want to do like half the year in the U.S., half the year in Taiwan. The U.S. allows me to grow faster from a career point of view, but being in Taiwan and also Vietnam, which is where my parents live, they allow me to stay grounded. The biggest struggle that was holding me back from going back to Taiwan entirely, and also among my friends too who live here who are Taiwanese, is like, if we go back, what can we do? there because the most common thought is like if you want to be a corporate worker working a nine to five then it makes more sense to do it in the states like from a salary point of view and also like opportunity point of view and also for me i'm more used to the corporate culture in the states i've never really worked in asia before but now that i know that part of my five-year plan is to own a business and spend time with my family more i am down to explore what that looks like how much i made on youtube over the year how do i get sponsored how much do I earn from each sponsorship? I would just say it's not enough to quit my job fully. I do like though how with YouTube, there's no ceiling as to how much you can make compared to like a corporate job. The more views you have, the more money you make from AdSense. When your stats grow, you can like increase your rates with sponsorships. The majority of the incomes are from sponsorships. Usually they just reach out to me through that email I put in my description box. I don't do any outreach, I don't have the time. Then it's YouTube AdSense that's paid out every month. That's based on how many views you get per month. Then affiliate links, which you see in the description box and people make a percentage of commission with every purchase. Would you become a full-time YouTuber? I don't think so. I don't think I'll become a full-time YouTuber. A lot of my friends ask me that question as well. For me, I come into things based on like the learning potential. I'm still learning so much and I can still see the learning potential to be really big with my 9 to 5 job. Not only does what I learned on my job feed into my content, like talking about business analytics tips. It's also helped me grow as a person. Like that's why I talked about, I want to be a better owner for my YouTube. So now I've been looking towards my favorite leaders at work and I observe how they speak, how they carry themselves, how they delegate, how they grow talent. And all of that still helps me to be a better owner for my YouTube channel as I'm starting to build my team. My life motto, I am a strong believer that your future is created by what you do today and every day. With everything I do in life, I always, always tell myself, I might not be the best, but I'll be the most persistent person to be better at it every day. I get a lot of comments from people saying like, oh, you have like a dream job, you have such a great life. But behind the scenes, it's also four years of working towards my career in college. I took six internships, clocked in over 5,000 hours of working and a half of them were unpaid. I would take classes in the morning, do my internship in the afternoon, take classes at night, do my homework up until late at night. Do this every semester for four years. I skipped summer vacation, winter vacation, so I can do my internship, submitted over 500 applications, went on more than 100 interviews, got rejected more than I could ever remember, and when I graduated, I only got one offer to work at Spotify. I don't see myself as like successful throughout this journey. I don't think success is built on success. It's built on failures, frustrations, and sacrifice. And even when you go through that, you're still very, very persistent, but I can promise you 100% all your hard Hard work now eventually pays off like you might not see it in a week in a month in a year it will pay off so just do it keep doing it don't quit nothing in the world can take the place of persistence what types of guys do i like when they are disciplined they're committed to doing whatever that they choose to do but also they need to have empathy and can talk about emotions with me because i'm a very sensitive person deep down my biggest turn off is when men like are lazy. Like I don't like when men talk the talk but don't walk the walk or they would try something for a hot second and they'd be like, oh, this is too hard, I'm gonna quit. Are you planning to go to grad school? Well, no. YouTube is my grad school and building a business from YouTube is my MBA. So I'm not going to grad school, I'm already in it. <laughs>
What would you say to someone who wants to start a YouTube channel? Any advice? Content wise, never, never start with lifestyle vlogs. If you think about it from a business point of view, the market for a lifestyle vlog is so saturated and there are already vloggers who are really, really good at lifestyle formats. I think a really simple question to ask yourself is, would you care about what your neighbor's lifestyle look like? Would you care about what their furniture look like? What workout they do? To be really frank, like why would people care about your life if they don't know you. So I think a better way to approach it is find your niche first, let people know who you are, and then you branch out to lifestyle content. My niche is my work life and how I build my career. In terms of how you find your niche, think about what you spend the most of your time thinking about or doing. Equipment wise, I actually filmed my first 15 videos purely on my iPhone 12 Pro Max. Do not invest in a camera in the beginning. Instead, focus on what your niche is, how to film, how to edit, how to tell a good story, making sure you are okay with the time commitment that goes behind each video and like you are actually consistent with it because a lot of people I know like they want to do YouTube and they film two videos and you're like, oh shit, this is too much work. My camera that I use right now is a Sony ZV-1. Oh my gosh, she's awake now. Look at that. What are the differences between a business analyst and a data analyst? Well, you can check out my video where I talked exactly about that, the difference between business analyst, data analyst, and data scientist. What would you recommend us to major in in college to become a business analyst? Do you have any colleagues who are business analysts that don't have a technical background? Yes, that person is me. I graduated with a music degree, but I want to tell you this. Becoming a business analyst has nothing to do with what you major in, doing whatever that you want to do, because majoring something doesn't mean that you will be guaranteed to get a job in that field later on. At the end of the day, it depends on your internship experiences, how you carry yourself through our interviews. So instead of focusing on what to study, I advise you to focus on what you are doing to set yourself apart in college. Because if you think about it, your business major and your class has I don't know, like 200 people with you. Once you all graduate, you're competing with like 200 people that have the same degree as you who go to the same courses. How are you going to set yourself apart? For me as a music major, what they don't have is technical skills. It's analytical skills. And I got those experiences through my internship. So it's not about what you study. It's about the experiences that you gain while in school that can set you apart from other people. Hardest part about living in the USA. 我听去美国的朋友说他一开始到美国生活很寂寞，而且没有人帮他，又是英语环境，所以压力很大，让他决定未来还是回到台湾工作。请问你一开始有这种情形吗？ The hardest part I struggled with when I first came here back in 2015 for college was one being away from family, and two, learning how to be extremely independent, and three, learning how to be very, very mentally strong. I only got to see my family once or twice a year during Thanksgiving or Christmas. I just remember like when all my friends were from here, they would go home and they would celebrate with their families and I would just be like alone in my door. Then I realized like, oh, I should probably just find friends who are like me. Uh, we're not from here and we should celebrate together. I think you will have to get through the homesick part, which relates to the second part. Be extremely independent not just in a way where like oh you know how to spend time by yourself you are entirely entirely responsible for everything that goes on in your life and when i got really sick freshman year i had to figure out how does insurance work here how do i go see a doctor how do i go get medicine no one is going to help you but yourself so the third one is like be really mentally strong. I felt that a lot when I go through interviews and also recruiting for my full-time job because at the end of the day, you are a foreigner. You are already at a disadvantage when you're looking for a job. It's knowing that like you are already at a disadvantage, but how much are you willing to work harder to get what you want? And how I got through all of this is having a really strong purpose. Like my purpose here is I want to see how far I can go. I want to to maximize my potential and I don't want to let myself down so I just kept going whatever I needed to do I did it how do you balance YouTube with full-time work how do you time manage do you have any to-do list juggling between YouTube and full-time job comes down to three things for me sacrifice structure and planning 
um, sacrifice. You can't make more time in a day. We all get 24 hours a day. So if you want to do more things, you just have to cut down certain things in life and understand what things you're willing to cut down. For me, I cut down a lot of my personal time, time with my boyfriend. The last time we went on date night was probably like two months ago. Also time with my family. Like, I used to call my parents and grandparents for probably like four hours on the weekend. I haven't been the best at keeping up with that. The second thing is on structure. I mentally structure what my week will look like the weekend before what are you doing your butt is itchy i first prioritize my nine to five job i look at what my deadlines are for the week what deliverables do i need to do because of them what day so i go to the office and i block my time visually and based on that i'll then figure out like what other times do i have for youtube what other gaps can i fill with my personal time and the third is planning so once i have the structure i also plan everything out so i can do things really effectively and very productive if i know that next week i need to film a video then this week i will focus on writing the talking points points, uh, writing the video structure, planning out my shot list. If I plan things out, it helps me save time when I actually edit and when I actually film. What is your Myers-Briggs personality type? I am an INFJ. I need to live my life with a very strong purpose. I need to know exactly why I exist on this world. It took me a long time until this year, which is when I really found my purpose. And that is to help people realize their potential. And that's also why I started my YouTube. And that's also why I got out of my quarter life crisis like I talked about in my last video. But generally speaking, I would say I'm really complicated sometimes i'm so complex that i don't understand myself <laughs> i'm both emotional and logical in a way where i feel a lot of emotions i sense a lot of things but i also know how to turn those feelings into insights for instance for youtube like i tend to know what people want to see how to tell a story how to articulate this thought better because i feel a lot and i sense a lot i'm really quiet but I also know how to make my voice heard. Like that's in a meeting at work. I'm never the first person to talk. I would instead like listen to people's perspectives, observe the room, read the body language, and then I will make really powerful points based on everything that I sense and feel. On average, how much time do you dedicate to filming and editing? Um, a lot of time. <laughs> Each video probably takes me around like 70 to 100 hours. For day to life, it's 100 hours. For like vlog, it's probably like 70 hours. In terms of the actual breakdown, there's concepting and scripting. This takes me around five to seven hours. Every video that you see, I basically started thinking about it probably at least two or three weeks in advance. Every day I will start jotting down my ideas in my shower, on the subway, during lunch, because ideas come from anywhere. So I just keep track of all the thoughts I have. Then if there's sponsorship, usually that takes three hours end to end writing the talking points, filming, editing. Filming, I usually film for like three to four hours and that's the footage that I have to work with. Then there's editing. Editing takes the most, most time because like if I have a three hour footage, it's basically like I have to watch the whole three hour and you just keep going over and over that footage and i'm a perfectionist so i try to like watch it probably like more than a hundred times and figure out like what is the best pacing like that doesn't drain people once i finish editing then there's also translating i translate all my videos to mandarin translating probably takes five hours because you're looking at like every second of the video and you're translating everything word by word for word but my friend also helps me with translating so right now i've been able to cut it down to i would say like two hours because i still have to review all the translation the final part is uploading uploading involves exporting the footage sometimes you go through errors and all those things um and then once you upload you have to write the description the title the thumbnail and all that stuff that probably takes you three hours so all in all you're looking at 70 hours to 100 hours behind each video 给想去美国工作的人有什么建议吗? experience working in the u.s as a foreigner working in the u.s it's a lot about having your own point of view and driving your own development in the states even during my internship and up until my full-time job now people don't tell me how exactly things should be done they value a lot about how you think, what your ideas are, what your perspectives are, you will be asked to share those. Even if you disagree on something with your manager, they still want you to say it. How I usually articulate it is like, I love what you said about doing it this way, and on top of it, I also think we can do it like X, Y, Z. Sometimes that is also an indicator for whether you're ready for a more senior role or the indicator for your confidence. Second thing is to drive your development. So. 
in December, I did my year-end review with my manager and I talked about my career trajectory, like promotion schedule, all that stuff. I told my family about it. And the first thing my grandparents said was, I was like, no. Like in the States, you have to say it. You have to tell people what you want because if you don't ask for it, no one knows what you need. The biggest advice I got from my first manager when I started my full-time job is you need to tell me what you want and what you need because I don't live in your mind. So if you don't tell me, I will never know. If you think it's embarrassing to talk about promotion and salary with your manager, just think about this way. Your manager also talks about it with his or her manager. So everyone does it. You're not that special. When you talk about it, it doesn't need to be like, oh, I think I deserve, you know, $10,000 more. In the past year, I've mastered, you know, whatever skill and that was reflected through XYZ project. I would love to align with you um, what my career trajectory looks like and whether I'm ready for that next level. You don't wait for people to tell you, oh, here's a promotion. Oh, here's a new project for you. Like you have to ask for it. Advice for college students that still have no idea what they want to do in the future. Advice for college students or anyone who is in school right now. College is the only time in your life where you're given the opportunity to meet the most friends, the most diverse set of people, explore whatever interests, whatever thing you want to do. You're given the time and the environment to do that. Once I graduated, like it gets harder to make friends. Even if you see, meet new friends, you don't necessarily have the time to hang out. So in college, take advantage of that. But most importantly, use your college to do as many internships as you can. Not for the sake of working, not for the sake of money, but the, for the sake of figuring out what you want to do and what you don't want to do. How I always thought about it in college was internship is a way for me to try out a role and try out a company and see whether I love or hate it. I would rather do more internship and experience it more in college than graduating not knowing anything and then go to a company and be miserable for like three years and have to like career switch or career pivot. How you choose your internship should always come from what do you want to learn next? What interests you? And I did that for four years. Then over time, I finally found the thing that interests me the most career-wise, which is analytics and strategy. So with that, this is the end of the q and I hope you enjoyed it and let me know if you have any other questions in the comments below. Anyways, happy new year and I will see you in my next video. Okay. It is currently 1 p.m. We are gonna start filming. What? You wanna be in the video? This frame looks too small because I'm gonna do the Oreo box and put it on. Do it for a while. Like this. I think it looks better. Elber, can you check if this framing looks good? So imagine. Actually, Oreo, do you wanna put it here? Like we, we film at an angle. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, this is great. It's great. Yeah, it's this lighting. Turn off that because there's a yellow blare here. Like when I talk to you, does it feel genuine? Does it feel like I'm talking to you as a friend? Or is this too far? I feel like it's a little bit far. Could be a little far. Yeah. But then if you go any closer, you can't see this. No, but you can move this closer. Yeah, because this is a glove on Yeah. Oh my gosh. The, out, the battery is out. So when I film, I always have three or more battery charged. Well, that was my 2022 wrap that you saw earlier and since now it's 2023. All right, so let's do this. Honestly, I kind of don't want to build a Ginebra house. There's so many things going on in my mind. I don't think I can focus. We literally just spent the last 30 minutes figuring out how to build this. And I don't think it's working. Like. Do this. Change your plan. We're gonna just not do this.